Good morning. So I'm very pleased to open the fourth annual research conference, which we uh, conduct together with the National Bank of Poland. And to representatives of the Central Bank and community from 40 countries are gathered here today. This is Europe, North America, Latin America, Asia, and Africa. I'm glad to see that more international participants this year than in the past three years. We're all different. We use different economic models. We face different problems and have different ways of resolving them. Advanced economies are busy fixing the problem of negative interest rates by normalizing them. And the countries which are developing, they're worried about the potential capital outflow affecting their currencies. Ex exporter countries are concerned that the global economy is cooling off. Importer countries are keeping a close eye on commodity prices. But what brings us all together is the need to answer one question. How to make ourselves heard in a world overwhelmed with information? And what is more, how are independent central banks supposed to survive in a world of post-truth where emotions draw more attention than facts than, and where populism spreads like a virus? Gone are the days when central banks could afford to be closed technocratic institutions that spoke in numbers and vague terms. In this day and age, central banking is first and foremost about transparency, openness and accountability. In the years to come, central banks will have to be client-oriented and capable of maintaining direct, di direct dialogue with the public. That is why not only central bankers have gathered in Kiev today. Among those present here today are journalists, analysts, financial market players, academicians, government officials, and representatives of international institutions. All of them are clients of central banks. Last year, the NBU developed and made public its first-year medium-term strategy. To NBU, this is a milestone document. It identifies seven strategic goals that the NBU as an institution will have to meet in the next few years. Thus, the medium-term strategy gives the public a simple outline of what the NBU expects to achieve. However, this is not the strategy's only feature. Also, for the first time ever, the NBU has changed the philosophy of its relationship with individuals and institutions as clients with which the NBU interacts and for which it works every day. Paraphrasing what President Kennedy said in his inauguration speech over 60 years ago, I would say, ask not what your country can do for your central bank, ask what your central bank can do for its clients. The need to be client-oriented sets in you and let's be frank, higher bar for the ability of central banks to build and maintain dialogue. It goes without saying that central banks use communications as an important monetary policy tool. But it's important to remember that transparency must be effective. It must help central banks pursue their mandates, which consist in ensuring price and financial stability. During these two days, we will discuss central bank transparency on more than one occasion. Central banks used to make everybody listen with bated breath to whatever scanty and vague words they had to offer. It's time for us to admit that this passive one-way communication no longer works. Ultimately, this approach undermines the effectiveness of central bank policy. If you don't understand us, it's your own fault, is the rhetoric that is outdated and obsolete. Today, if you are the NBU's client and you have difficulty understanding the NBU, the NBU blames itself for being a bad communicator. Institutions that make themselves heard and understood are the only ones that deserve public trust. Institutions that have public trust are the only ones that are worthy of support and commitment. Institutions that have public support the, are the only ones that can withstand the pressure of populism, fake news, manipulations, and attempts to turn these institutions into interim instruments for furthering vested interests that run counter to the interests of the public. Under these circumstances, the central bank should transform the same way as the corporate sector has and begin to finally listen to clients and seek two-way communication. And uh, long story short, the need to be client-oriented compels banks to transition to targeted communications. We at the NBU have been moving in that direction for five years. The NBU laid the groundwork for greater transparency in 2015 when it gained institutional independence and the mandate to pursue price and financial stability. 
As with every central bank, the NBU started out with the classic toolkits, banks, experts, and the media, with which we communicated through press releases, press briefings, meetings, and interviews. However, the financial and economic crisis, which prompted the NBU to develop more rapidly, compelled the regulator to take its communications to a higher level of transparency. Yes, strangely enough, it took a crisis to inspire that change. With a large-scale cleanup of the banking system underway, peaking inflation, noticeable depreciations of the hryvnia, international reserves at an all-time high and the prospect of significant repayments and public debt looming ahead. Ukraine was going through a severe economic crisis. Add to this the fact that public confidence in government institutions was at its lowest. Government communications were in tatters. The media market was underwater and the expert community was stagnating. An institution would opt to become even more closed in those circumstances, but the NBU made an opposite decision. The NBU adopted the new culture and values that are built around accountability to the public. The NBU NBU decided that breaking the silence was the only way to put an end to endless attacks by oligarch bankers, manipulations by politicians, and a downpour of fake news. Since then, the NBU has tried to explain its actions to the public every step of the way. The NBU has expanded its audience to include businesses, non-bank financial institutions, academia, students, and most important, the public at large. The NBU commits to be accountable before the people for its actions and words. The NBU clearly declares the opportunities and challenges Ukraine faces. The NBU not only communicates with clients through its official website and the media, but also gradually learns to, to be the media, communicating directly with the public on five social networks. The NBU counters fake news with fact-checking, and it's not afraid to speak up when it sees a storm approaching that threatens to engulf the country. Over time, the NBU came to a conclusion that when choosing with whom to communicate, central banks must also address the question of what, how, and where to say. The NBU realized which direction it should take as evolved. This led the NBU to adopt another milestone document last year, which will help it from abandoning its chosen course. I'm talking about the NBU's updated communication strategy. Once introduced, the communication strategy will reinforce the confidence in the regulator, maximize the influence of the NBU on the behavior of target audiences, and reduce economic uncertainty through provision of information required to make informed decisions. The Central Banking Awards 2019 honored the NBU's team by awarding the NBU the Transparency Award. The award recognizes the NBU's progress in moving in the right direction. The fact that the international community placed the NBU on a pair with the central banks of Sweden, Canada, Czech Republic, Ireland and Israel is undoubtedly a recognition of our achievements, but the road ahead is long and winding. The world is changing by the day, and central banks must keep abreast with it. The difficult time that the global economy in general and Ukraine in particular are going through is the best time for change. Now the central banks have found themselves outside their comfort zones is the best time for change. The NBU is ready to evolve alongside. I hope this conference will give us a boost and inspire us as we evolve together. But before I give the floor to our honorable speakers, let me take the NBU one step closer to a future that is more transparent. Let me open my personal Twitter account and send my first tweet as we speak. So let's do it together. Here comes my first tweet. So that everyone was in the picture. So it's not that easy as it turns out. Okay, so first one gone. So thank you for the attention. I wish you very interesting speeches and uh, leave discussions in the following two days. Let's have a fruitful work. Thank you.